Hey everybody, how you doing? Good morning. Well, what an amazing weekend of reading comments, both uh, here and I actually have a little profile on TikTok and decided to splinter off a little bit of this halo reaction that I did on Friday. And uh, don't know if I'll keep that profile because I, I, I hear TikTok can be a little dark and heavy, but eh, for right now it's pretty good. Um, I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out though. Uh, the, and well, but let's start with that. Uh, on TikTok, a lot of the uh, comments that I got were so uh, wonderful. They were joyous. They were kind of heavy. Um, I loved the ones that were saying, oh my God, why did you make me cry? Or I'm not crying, you're crying. Or, uh, you know, damn, now I'm picking up the game and I'm going to put another 500 hours into it just for fun. The power of, <clears throat> of nostalgia uh, or, or the emotions that are evoked based on nostalgia uh, can be, you know, pretty intense in all different spectrums of, uh, of, of emotions. Joy, calm, melancholy, happy, you know, despair, sadness, whatever. Um, but the soundtrack of life, of which I talk about a lot in my other channel, um, is such a powerful trigger mechanism to bringing ourselves back to I, re I remember when. Halo for me was uh, very unique and I felt emotional. You can kind of see it in there because, well, two reasons. One, the, act, the composition. Uh, out of all the things that I've listened to so far that are OST oriented, a lot of them are very call to action and thematic, you know, Nordic dun 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 or whatever the case is. And when I just set, you know, uh, to play and start where I did on that reaction, and that beautiful, beautiful, powerful, less is more uh, kind of composition, I just went, oh my God, I remember. I mean, I, my, my mind went into that mode as well as it went into the mode of listening to what was going on there. And, um, you know, I started thinking about where I was immediately when I heard that song. Why is it so like, oh man, I remember, oh uh, yeah, this this was the in the, in the, in the kitchen area of my recording studio or by the lobby or not the lobby where the couches were and stuff and um, you know started thinking about when I used to sit there and play the game or or whatever the case is what it was like in life for me back in that you know in 2000 whatever it was two or three or whatever that point was and um, it was it was truly a, a real big take back you know as well as all the comments here it's pretty amazing to read um, comments that talk about, you know, before, maybe before a family member went off and got, you know, sent out to go war or, 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 you know, used to play it with your dad and it passed away or, you know, better times when life was easier, when there wasn't so much. And it's really true because I think, I mean, for me, as, as I recall, um, I think Halo and that whole Bungie, Microsoft, Xbox thing, was and you guys tell me if it wasn't i don't know i only played one seriously i've only played one video game which was halo for the first disc and then after that life took off and i had to you know do what i do and um but i believe that halo was that game that was the very first to make that gigantic leap in you know um, fps style you know gaming physics if you would and um so perhaps being one of the biggest movements in the video game world, you know, it's almost like, you know, the very first band of a genre that broke out with something like, you know, you would say Nirvana maybe for grunge or corn for new metal or whatever, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, if Halo was that game that lifted everything to another level, and I think by virtue of that, tons of people bought it. And even if, you, even if a good percentage were like me, who played it once or, and then life went on and you didn't pick up, you know, you didn't buy more video games, you didn't continue the journey. That, is, that it was such a powerful moment to experience that and uh, to be exposed to that and to the music. And one of the things about the music that I really started thinking about it since I started doing OST reactions is the fact that it's the only uh, format where music is included that, is, that has such a repetitive nature. Um, and what I mean by that is, even if you have your most favorite movie and you watch it 10 times a year, even if you rewind it to your favorite scene every now and then and you watch the scene, you listen to the music, you're generally going to go on. But the video game kind of 
keeps you contained until you, you know, graduate that level. You know, you've, you've gotten the coins or killed this or whatever. Now you go to the next level and you could spend hours upon hours in that one level. And then you're just constantly listening to the music. And it's really uh, symbionically, no, it's, it's unilaterally ingrained to the visual process that we're getting. And then even one more level up beyond anything that I've ever experienced, the interactivity of it. We're using different senses. You know, as we're playing these video games and stuff, you know, with, it, with the physical sentence, the eye-hand coordination, the kill, the whole thing, you know, you were a participant in it. And that not only do the visuals, but the music becomes such an intense part of that process. And I think that is what's really enjoyable for me as I'm going through these um, video game OST titles and songs and stuff, to know that that marriage is so much more... Uh, intense or has a has a different deeper meaning than let's say we just listen to our favorite song and stuff because we're we're we become one with the in, with the interactivity of it i think old man talking a lot right now cup of coffee but <laughs> but i have to admit you know in closing this little video that for myself i really did because this was my truly my experience was was you know the same as a lot of yours was when i was listening to it i, I really was like I was pulled back, you know, 20 years ago was, for whatever you want to, depending on who you are, for me, it was better times. It was a lot less complicated, it, you know, um, and also the joy of playing a video game and being able to hit levels and do this whole stuff. And at the end of the day, where the credits do is, you know, with the composer, uh, be it the composer of Halo or any composer of any of these video games that, that put that kind of work and energy into it, you know, and... Um, and it, I, apparently it has transcended. I didn't play any other games except for the first one. So, but from what I hear, you know, the, the motifs, the, rep the re repetitive themes, if you would, that'll come in in different arrangements, maybe with different um, orchestrations or different, you know, ways that they're being written, has continued itself all the way through, uh, at least for, the, for up until, I, some, a lot of people are saying that I have to do a, a Halo o OSDT, ODST, or something like that. And that these motifs repeat. You know, and that's just that's just the pure, you know. There's there's composer knowledge that uh, are, is kind of basic, though I don't say that there's anything basic about the music that I'm hearing. But you know, when you are working on something in long form like a movie, you have a tendency to re to repeat, you know, a phrase, a motif, something you know that's that represents the character might be uh, a melodic line, and every time that character comes in, that melodic line gets played. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's played first with a violin in a small arrangement when it opened up, but now it's played with just a low bass, you know, line when he's going through the forest or something. You know, that kind of stuff is fun. That's, that's the kind of fun we get to do as composers. But anyhow, I, I just wanted to pop this video out uh, before I get on to more work this week and uh, here on the channels. I want to thank all of you so much for hanging out. Uh, it's been really fun reading the comments. Um, and, you know, I've watched, uh, you know, quite a few people join in here on the page and sub into it and everything. And uh, thank you for, for joining me with the experience uh, of, of, this is probably the first time this has ever happened because I mean, I do have that heavy metal channel, but that's a brand new experience and there isn't any music that I really recognize except for some of the old throwback Thursdays I may have done, you know, Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, whatever. But um, this, this was my very first reaction in and out from a visceral response from me to just as, you know, professionally as a composer you know, doing what I do. And you guys, you guys are on that journey with me, you know. And of course, I wouldn't have been on that journey had I not clicked on a link and said, yeah, I'll listen to this. And that's why I want to thank you guys for doing that and giving me the suggestions. So if you're still here, I always joke about at the end of the videos, uh, type in, I'm still here. And if you want to support me in the channel, there are links below for the headsets, a cup of coffee, or join me on Patreon. And, uh, or, and don't forget too, there's also, if you're a heavy metal guy, you want or gal, you can go ahead and uh, check me out on the... Um, the Decomposer Lounge, that's, that's the name of that channel there. All right, guys, listen, gals, everybody, take care of yourself. Thanks for hanging out. I got all kinds of fun stuff coming up. All right, see ya.